What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to Fix It Garage. Today is part three of this EJ22 build. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these heads off and we're gonna get them ready to go to the machine shop to get machined. So let's go ahead and get started pulling these heads off right away. So pulling the cylinder heads on these is actually pretty simple. It's six bolts, six 14 millimeter, 12 point bolts. So as long as you have a 12 point socket, that's 14 millimeters in size, you can pull one of these heads. A big note when pulling a cylinder head is you always wanna start with the outside bolts and work your way in. Whereas when you're tightening, you work from the inside out and you still wanna go in a cross pattern to evenly release the torque on the heads to prevent them from warping. So what you're gonna see me do is you're gonna see me loosen this bolt, that bolt, that one, that one, this one, and that one will be last. I could also start in one of the other corners and do it, depending on how I do it. But you always wanna start from the outside in and go in a crisscross pattern to evenly release the tension on the cylinder head. Sometimes they'll even tell you to only move them a quarter turn at a time. These ones, it's not gonna be as big of a deal. They are getting machined. But yeah, you also sometimes usually, when you're dealing with certain kinds of engines, you need to loosen them in steps. So always be sure to consult the service manual before disassembling any kind of engine. We got the cylinder heads off, and it's not the worst news I've ever seen. It's not the best thing ever. Uh, there's rust obviously in the whole block. This thing has been sitting for a very long time. So it's not great, but it's not horrible. The cylinder walls don't have any major scoring. They have some rust in here from sitting, and because the head gaskets were bad, it, some of it got into the, the cylinder wall. Nothing that just can't be honed out. I'm still probably gonna have a machine shop kind of look it over, at least hot tank the engine, just to clean it up a little bit, make it look a little better. Hopefully get some of this rust out of all the coolant jackets. I'll, I'll talk to them and see what they can do. Uh, overall though, it, it's not horrible. It's definitely something we can work with. I just need to clean all the gasket material off, which we'll do here in a little bit. We're gonna have to clean it up here and we're gonna have to clean them off the cylinder heads. So really not that bad. The heads are off and you guys can tell, it's actually fairly easy to remove. The hardest part will be getting these dowel pins out, which I don't think I'm going to try that right now. I'm gonna get a tool to do it here in a little bit. We'll, we'll knock them out here in a little bit. But the heads are now off, so at least from here, the heads need to be disassembled to go off to a machine shop. Which that's actually the next thing we're gonna do, so we can get those off the machine shop first, so while those are being machined, we can continue to work on this block. So let's go ahead and jump over to the cylinder heads and we'll disassemble them on the bench. First things first, we need to get these head gaskets off. Now I kind of cheated, I already loosened them. So they come off pretty easy. Uh, they were definitely wasted and leaking. So those are done. Obviously we are never gonna reuse a set of head gaskets. So those go into the discard pile. 
So that's all we're really gonna take apart on the bottom for right now. We're gonna let the machine shop deal with most of this and try to clean it up. I could, but I've got enough having to clean up the block. So we're gonna let them deal with the head. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip these things over, which I'll do right now. And you can hear that there's water inside the cooling jackets. That's lovely. Now we can pull the rockers off, which are just a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts here. You have these four and these two. And again, we're gonna go outside in on both of them. We're gonna pull both these rocker assemblies off so we can see the cams. And then we can work on pulling the cams out and getting off this EGR pipe, which we're gonna just cut off again. So let's get right into pulling off these rockers. Rockers are off. Let's go ahead and spin these cams real quick. So this cam right here actually looks pretty good. There's no grooves, no wear on it, no excessive wear. That cam looks fine. Same with this one. This cam looks fine. So that tells me this engine was never run dry on oil. Now let's pull the cams out. That's a little bit interesting on these. To pull this cam, you have to Take out these two 12 millimeter bolts and it just slides out. This cam, you have to take this whole front housing on. And if I remember this back cover here and then this cam slides out. It might just be pulling off this front cover. We'll find out together as I remember how to take these apart. So let's start off by pulling this cam out and then we'll pull this one off. So let's get right back into it. Cams are out. It's actually really simple. Two 12 millimeter bolts on this head. This one was one 12 millimeter bolt and two 10 millimeter bolts. So looking at these cams on the actual bearing surfaces that they ride on, I see no damage to them. These actually look just fine. So the cams are good. Looking at the cylinder head, there's no excessive wear on these bearing surfaces. Also looks good. It means the engine was never run without oil. Now that we've inspected the cams, the next thing we need to do is we need to get this cam plug out, the front cam seal out, we need to get this EGR pipe off so these can be ready to go to the machine shop. So I think that what we will do now is we will go ahead and we will pull this cam plug and this cam seal off, then we'll cut this EGR pipe to remove that fitting and we'll take this 10 millimeter bolt off and these heads will be ready to go to the machine shop. Okay, so we got the heads completely stripped. These are now ready to go to the machine shop. So I'm gonna go drop these off probably in the next couple days, get them cleaned up, and we'll hear back from the pressure test and everything, make sure that these are all good. 
When taking cylinder heads to a machine shop, I highly recommend you pressure test them every time just to make sure there's no cracks on the cylinder in the head. Not in the cylinder, in the head. In this space here, you don't want any cracks. Uh, that would be, obviously it would make it, there'd be no point for them to machine it if there was a crack somewhere in the head. At that point, the head would need to be replaced. So fingers crossed that these are good, but we're gonna have them pressure tested, we're gonna have them machined and cleaned up and hot tanked. Next, we're gonna work on taking off part the block. While these are away, we're gonna work on taking apart the block some more and kind of inspecting that as well. That might also need to become completely apart and go out to the machine shop. I don't know yet. I'm gonna to talk to the machine shop, see what they think, kind of go from there. So let's jump right back into the engine block. So it's actually the next day, guys. I ended up calling in a night after we got the cylinder heads off. I dropped them off at the machine shop. I should have them back in a couple days, just in time for the next video. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the oil pan off. With it being the next day, I forgot something to pull the crank pulley bolt back out again. So we're not probably gonna take the oil pump off today, but we're gonna get the pan off. And that's probably gonna be it for today. Off camera, I'm gonna clean up these heads and actually try to get some of the surface rust out. To start with, let's get this pan off so I can look inside the crankcase and kind of see what we got going on. So we have more good news with the oil pan off. We pulled the pickup off and we pulled the baffle out. We're not gonna be reusing the pickup or the pan just because that was all smashed, kind of like how that's smashed too. Uh, there was also only four bolts holding the oil pan in and absolutely no liquid gasket holding it on, which means that this pan has been removed at some point to drain out the oil. Not a big deal, there was still enough oil in here, just a little bit, so it wasn't completely empty. Looking at the crank, and looking at the rod caps here and looking at the connecting rods, everything looks okay. I've also spun it and kind of looked at what I can see of the skirts of the pistons. Everything seems to look good. I don't see any real damage in here. There's no hot marks. None of the rods are banging back and forth like it's got worn bearings or anything. So the inside of this block actually looks really good. That is good news for this engine. More good news. The more we start tearing into it, the more it looks a little better. It may not be the prettiest engine you've ever seen, but mechanically, everything's looking good. We're gonna wait to hear on those cylinder heads, but I'm fairly confident they're gonna be just fine. Alrighty guys, so we've got the heads off, we've got the pan off, we've got everything inspected on the block and everything looks good. We need to do a little bit of cleanup on it still, mainly getting some of this surface rust out, which I'm gonna do off camera. I don't wanna show you guys my trick for that because it is a little bit unorthodox. Anyways, that's gonna do it for today, guys. Next time, we're gonna finish taking this thing apart and probably start putting it back together depending on what happens with the cylinder heads. Thank you guys all for watching. If you like what you saw, remember to smash that like button as always. Comment down below with any of your questions and remember to su subscribe so you don't miss any future videos with this or so you don't miss what this is going in. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it, trust me. 
Thank you guys again, and remember that on projects like this, you should never stop wrenching.